now is the part most of you have been waiting for. I'm going to answer all your questions. Strike that. Reverse it. I'm going to try to answer all your questions. And man, did you guys have so many questions. So many questions. But they were really good questions, so thank you for asking them. And I will try my best to answer them all. There is no try. So right off the bat, I'm going to answer the question that I was asked the most. Many of you wanted to know, and I mean everybody wanted to know if the Pintech RS5 trigger on the right symbol was a dual zone trigger. If it could pick up the bell, that sounds great, and the bow. Ow. And the answer is no. No, 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 no! The Pintech RS5 is a single zone trigger, which means from one hit, it will produce one sound. Whatever sound it is linked to your brain or module or a computer, it will trigger that one sound. Now with a ride symbol, that doesn't really help much because you can get out of a real ride, you can get a million sounds or whatever, but mainly two, the bell and the bow. And with the RS5 trigger, that doesn't really help much if you want two sounds. If you're just trying to do a basic hybrid swap, it's great. You'll get that one sound, that one pingy ride sound. If you don't care about the bell, then that's fine. So on a basic level, it gets the job done. But if you really want the two sounds, then the RS5 will not do that. So you might ask, why did you use that trigger in the first place? Well, I used it because I didn't know if this was going to work in the first place. So the fact that it did work was good enough for me. That was a good starting ground. And then, of course, I'm going to build off of this and, and, and make it better and better. So the fact that it worked at all was awesome. But I knew I needed to find a way to get a dual sound out of it. So with this setup, if you want to get a dual sound, you can do what I did, which is just a temporary thing. This roll and ride rubber symbol temporarily works for me. It's a good solution for right now. But there are other ways to get dual and even three zone triggering out of this symbol. Some of you in the comment section mentioned stealth drum triggers. Now I read about stealth drum triggers a while ago. Before I did this build, that was my, my vision at first was to buy these stealth drum triggers. Stealth Drum is, is like the company name for the symbols and use that. But I wanted to test if I could do it a different way, uh, a more affordable way. Not that those triggers are really expensive. For what they do, they're an amazing price. But I wanted to see if this setup would work. And it does on a pretty basic level. But if you want to go the next step, I would look into the Stealth Drum triggers. Their website is stealthdrums.com. Basically what it is is a symbol trigger system that you attach to real symbols. And they, they trigger like a Roland V-Drum trigger. This is what I've heard. I haven't used them, so I don't know. And you can choke them, which is great. These RS5 ones are not chokeable. I'm still finding more out about them. So if anyone knows more about them or has used them, please comment like crazy in the comment section or whatever, talk about them. Okay, now sticking with the dual zone triggering theme. Some of you asked about getting dual zone out of your snare. How do you get a dual zone such as a rim shot and a snare shot out of the same trigger on the same drum. Now there is a really easy solution, unlike the cymbals. Roland makes a trigger specifically for your snare. It's called the RT30HR. It's a dual zone trigger. So it allows you to have dual zone, two sound. You can have your rim shot and you can have your snare hit. I have one of them installed on my snare. The rest on my toms are all singles. You can put dual on your toms if you want, if you wanted to get rim sounds on your toms. Uh, that'd be pretty cool. In this RT30HR, there are two triggering mechanisms in there that can detect a rim shot and a snare hit. It works really well and I haven't had any issues with it since I first installed it. So that's how you do dual zone on a snare. All right, on to hi-hat questions. Many of you asked about using a standard hi-hat stand with this trigger setup, with the RS5s. Standard meaning a hi-hat stand you'd find on acoustic drum set, one that physically opens and closes with the pedal. There's a way that this can work, but not with the RS5 triggers, and not the way I have it set up right now. So to pull this off, you can buy a Roland VH13V hi-hat. Now that is the electric hi-hats that are on the higher up Roland electric sets. And it's two symbols, much like a normal hi-hat, that actually physically open and close with a standard hi-hat you know, chain driven pedal. Basically there's like a sensor in between them that can sense the opening and closing. You could use that and just put these L80s on top of it. That's one way you can go around it. Or you could do the stealth drum trigger way, which I believe is kind of the same method. I think there's a trigger that goes inside the hats and senses when they open and close 
and also senses the hit. That's a way you could do it. Most likely this is the method that I'm going to use, using the stealth drum triggers with a real hi-hat. Now the way I have it set up is with the Roland hi-hat pedal, which is electronically attached. There's no, no stand here, there's no connection between the pedal and the actual hi-hat. And the pedal itself is a trigger. It, it triggers a sound and also triggers when the hi-hats make an open and close sound. Since it's not physically attached, the hi-hat doesn't physically open and close like a normal hi-hat. Another hi-hat question I was asked is why did I only put a trigger on the bottom of the hi-hat or why did I not put the trigger on the top of the hi-hat? I placed the trigger on the bottom hat because it's nice and hidden and out of the way. If it was on the top with a hi-hat spinning, I might end up hitting it and damage or break the trigger. So having it on the bottom was a way of concealing it from any stick hits. Also the trigger doesn't need to be on the top hi-hat to be triggered. I know it seems strange to put the trigger on the bottom when you hit the top hi-hat, but since the hi-hats are basically touching at all times, I have them closed all the time, that when I hit the top one it sends a vibration to the bottom and it triggers it. And it triggers it really well. Or it did trigger it really well because I don't have it set up like that anymore. I was also asked what is mass time. I talked about mass time a lot in the other video and how you need to adjust it all. And basically mass time is the time that the brain or module is inactive until the next hit is detected. Basically it's the time between the hits where the module or brain will not trigger a sound. This is essential in eliminating double triggering, which is a false trigger signal, which is a triggered signal that you did not play. So by adjusting the mass time, which is typically measured by milliseconds, you can greatly improve the accuracy of your triggers. Okay, so there's a lot of smaller questions that I'm just gonna try to speed run. I totally forgot I had a second camera going. All right, here we go. Balanced or unbalanced quarter inch cables. This TD9 harness that is connected to all my drums and cymbals uses balanced cables. Have any of the Pintech triggers fallen off? Uh, yes, but only one of them. When I got this Gen 16 China, I put an RS5 underneath there, and after a while it just came off. I don't know if it's because the buffed bronze finish on the Gen 16 is a lot smoother, so it's not as adhesive as the rougher L80s, because I haven't had one fall off of these at all. But on this one it fell off. So my solution was to put zip ties threw the little holes in here, it was a perfect size, and I just strapped it with two zip ties underneath here, and it's never fallen off. But yes, they have fallen off. That's what it looked like when it fell off. You can see little holes on there, pretty cool. This is a new camera, by the way. Looks pretty good, except they're blurry now. If I just get some cheap symbol and duct tape to crap out of them, and then trigger them, do you think that would be equivalent? Uh, maybe you can definitely try it. I'm not sure how long the tape would last. Then again, I've seen tape hold up some pretty sketchy things. In fact, this camera right here is being held up by tape right now. Little did you know, you can use tape for a little camera like that. So, it's possible, I mean, if, if like you said, you just duct tape the crap out of it, I don't know, it might work. Go for it. In that scenario, if having the loudness of a real symbol and it being triggered uh, is not a problem, if you don't mind being loud, basically, but you want a triggered symbol, then yeah, go for it. Oh, you brought it? Yeah. Oh, awesome. You can just, can you throw it? Actually, you can open the door all the way. Oh. I have it set up. Cool, thanks. Mm -hmm. I'm about to get to that part too. How do you connect your module to your computer and how do you record? With this. Ow. Sh I connect my module to my computer using this MIDI cable. It's a Roland M1 MK2. I had another MIDI cable, uh, I think it was a Yamaha one, and it just didn't work with a Roland. So I figured Roland works with Roland and it worked perfectly. I had to download additional software but it took like five minutes and it was working fine and it works great. I also use this on my Roland Juno DI keyboard if I do MIDI <laughs> stuff on the keyboard. And I'm not sponsored or endorsed by Roland by any means. Their stuff's really good and I mean if they wanted to sponsor or endorse me, I mean that'd be totally cool. I wouldn't mind. I mean I use like their triggers and their cables and other cables and some of the cables and I use So yeah it'd be pretty cool. Uh, if Roland wanted to do that, it'd be cool. <clears throat> can you use the pin tech triggers on the snare, kick, and toms as well? Yes, you can. Originally, that's what I did at first when I was testing this combination of the mesh heads with a trigger on a real drum. Um, I used RS5 on the snare drum. They worked really well, um, but they didn't work as well as the Roland. I had to adjust them a lot more and tweak them, and it took a lot more time to get them all dialed in, but it worked really well. So yeah, you can definitely use them on 
all of them. And compared to the RT30 rolling triggers, they're a lot cheaper. So if you're going for a more basic hybrid, but a more simple approach, I suppose, though you might have to spend more time tweaking it, they definitely will work. But keep in mind that they're single zone triggers, so you won't get a rim shot and a snare hit on the same trigger. With a silent stroke heads, do you think there is less vibration on the floor? For example, the kick or floor tom? Yes, there is significantly less vibration. Not only the, the floor tom and the kick drum, which would produce the most low frequency sound, um, but as well as the toms and the snare. They are a lot quieter. It's maybe something that doesn't translate as well on video. You kind of have to hear them in person. But if I were to do this on a real floor tom, you probably wouldn't be able to hear me talk. And same with the kick. I had this kick drum completely filled with a with a like comforter blanket and some pillows. Um, so it's really dead, but it's it's really quiet. And I could almost say you could play this in an apartment. It still is a big impact. I mean, playing drums in an apartment building is it's just one of those things that is pretty difficult to achieve. If you built a soundproof stage like I had, um, it will help a lot with this setup, but it'd have to be a pretty big stage. So yeah, you could probably get away with playing this in an apartment. But to answer your question, yes, it is super quiet. Very quiet. What did you use for resonant heads? I used the stock heads that came with this Ludwig set. I suppose you could switch them out with the mesh, the, the Remo Silent Stroke mesh heads. It might make it quieter, I, I would imagine it would. That's something maybe I'll test out. But the stock resonant head paired with a silent stroke on top, it it's really not that loud. It's really quiet, but it's something I may experiment with. Another thing that I don't know if I mentioned in the other video, on my snare here, I took the actual snare, you know, all the wires, I took that off my snare because I don't need it. It would be really loud with that on. Um, so my snare sounds like just the snare turned off. That's just something I don't think I mentioned in the other video. How do you find those rolling triggers on the mesh heads? Do those pin tech triggers work on your cymbals? How accurate are they? The rolling triggers work great with the mesh heads. It's just like playing a, a normal Roland V drum set, like the set I used to have. It's just like playing that. They're super sensitive and they're really easy to, to tweak in the module to customize for each size of tom or snare or whatever, or kick drum. I haven't had a single problem, and I've had this set up for almost a year. I've had to, you know, tune some of the heads, of course, but I haven't had to change any of the, the settings on the triggers. Now, for the Pintech triggers on the cymbals, they're pretty accurate. Uh, I was surprised because they're not designed to be put on a cymbal, but when you mess with the settings, I say it a lot, I mess with a lot of settings. It takes some time to, to iron all this crap out. Once you get it dialed in, they're surprisingly accurate. I wouldn't expect to play like crazy fast double strokes on the hi-hat or, or the crash or the ride, but they, they are quite accurate once you get them all dialed in. If you're building a basic kit and I guess a beginner and you're not going to be playing crazy fast, intricate jazz stuff on these cymbals, then they, they, they work great. But if you want the next step, you can do the, the Roland V rubber cymbal trick or you can do the stealth drum, which is probably the best solution. But on a basic level, they work really well. Does bad slash out of tune drums have an effect on the sound? If you're using sounds from your module or your software on your computer by the way of being triggered, then no. The sound of your electric drum set are always gonna be as good or as bad as the sounds from your source. If you have cheaper software in your computer or your brain or your module, um, you're gonna have cheaper sounding drums. Now having said that, having a drum, let's say a snare, that is poorly tuned, I mean poorly tuned by it's really loose and there's wrinkles on there, will it affect the sound? No, because you're not generating the sound from the actual snare itself. The sound is being generated by the signal of it being hit. Having a drum that the head is really loose and wrinkled it won't affect the sound, but it will affect how it triggers. Because if you have a really loose head, it's gonna it's gonna bounce up and down a lot, double trigger, or I don't I don't know what it will do. I haven't really messed with that uh, scenario, but uh, it won't trigger right. Are your monitors plugged into your Mac or your Roland Brain? My monitors, which are these, um, these are sure in-ear monitors. I don't know what exactly they're called. I've had them for a long time. They work really well. My monitors are plugged into a Focusrite Scarlet 2i2, this thing. They're plugged into into this. 
headphone slot, and then this is plugged into my computer, and this is where the audio comes out of my computer and comes out into this and then out of the headphones into my ear. The reason I have it set up like this is because this has a volume control on it and I mounted this on my rack. So my volume control, even though the sounds are coming from my computer, which is way over there, which is like three feet away, I'm able to control the volume easily. You know, I can just reach over and change it. It's really easy. And also my headphone cable isn't that long. So if I were to have them plugged into my monitor, I'd have my head over like this and that would suck. So having it plugged into this is really convenient. How do you amp this? You can amp this setup in several ways. You can have the audio exit the interface like this one on the back using uh, quarter inch cables that can connect to whatever monitors or amp that you have. Or you can have the audio exit the computer directly using, uh, where is that cable? One second. Oh, or you can have the audio exit your computer directly using a uh, splitter cable kind of thing like this. This would exit out of your headphone jack from your computer and then this would plug into your speakers. Now that's if you're using audio from your computer. If the computer is your source for your drum sound. If you're using the sounds just from a module or a brain, you can just use regular old quarter inch cables that can connect to an amp. This is the setup I use when I stream live. When I stream live, I use the sounds from the Roland TD9. I don't use Superior Drummer because my computer can't handle running OBS and Superior Drummer and you know the internet at the same time. So I just eliminate one program and I just use the stock sounds from the TD9, which sound really good. Some of you noticed the sound of my cymbals in the last video were quiet and they weren't as bright. And some of you wanted to know if it was from the RS5 triggers, if that was making the cymbals sound that way. And no, it isn't. I have the cymbals sounding like that because it's just a personal preference. I prefer to have the cymbals not loud and kind of in your face. I like the cymbals to be kind of quiet and spread out throughout the song. It's just something I've always liked in the sound of cymbals. I like when cymbals are kind of way back in the mix. It's just a preference I've always liked. I understand that you know some songs and genres require the cymbals to be like in your face and that's perfect. I just haven't really been playing music that requires that. So that's why my cymbals may seem quieter and it's not because of triggers. You can adjust it however you want in your software, but no, it's not because of triggers. How do the Gen 16 cymbals feel to normal cymbals? Do you think they would crack easily? These Gen 16 cymbals and subsequently L80 cymbals, I think they're made out of the same material, they just have a different finish on them. They feel a lot like normal cymbals. Standard, non-holy cymbals. There's definitely a weight difference. When you do hit them, they do get a lot more vibration and a lot more movement out of a more solid cymbal. But it's really not that noticeable. It's not that noticeable in the hi-hat because they're, you know, they can be clamped down all the time. When I play back some of the video of when I'm drumming on this set, you can really see the cymbal wobble and warp a lot when you hit it, especially if you have a camera with like a high shutter speed, you can really see it and it's it's pretty cool to see. I know you get that with a lot of cymbals, but I'm talking about if you just like kind of barely hit it, you can really see it. That's really the only difference is, is the weight and the, the, how much movement they have. So you might have to tighten them down a little more. Don't really have them that tight. I mean, they can, I mean, there's some movement and this one's really tight. But it's not a huge difference and it's not a big distraction either. I've heard people say they've cracked the L80 cymbals and Gen 16 cymbals. In my experience, I haven't cracked any of them. I'm not the hardest hitter, but I've definitely cracked my share of normal cymbals. I've had these for about a year and they don't show any signs of cracking or fraying or anything. So only time will tell in my experience. Are the Zildjian cymbals acoustic quieter than the rubber Roland ones? It's difficult to tell because the rubber cymbals and the L80s are made out of completely different material. They have very different sounds. The rubber Roland cymbals have a short thud to them, a short, deep, and loud thud to them. While the L80s have a brighter, more sustained sound to them. So it's kind of hard to tell because they're so different. I want to say that L80s are quieter, but then again, I haven't really measured them. I did make a video comparison a while back, comparing L80s to normal cymbals and uh, rubber cymbals. So if you want to hear the sound difference coming from a camera mic, I would suggest watching that video. It gives you an idea of the different sounds that they generate, but they're definitely quieter than a normal cymbal. I mean, 
It doesn't really translate that well on a video. If this were a normal symbol and I were to hit it like this while talking, you really wouldn't be able to hear me. And you can probably hear me. I don't know. I can't really hear myself. Would this setup be good for a live use scenario? Yes, it would. That would be something I would love to see. I haven't, what is in my eye? That's something I would love to see. I haven't played with the set live. I mean, I did live Twitch streams or whatever, uh, but I haven't brought it to a venue and played live. But I would imagine that's something you could definitely do. The way you can do that is send the audio out from your brain, or if you're using software on a laptop or a computer, you send the audio out to the house mixer and then they can deal with it and they actually might like that because you can pretty much mix everything on your computer or on here and they wouldn't really have a lot to, to mess with. They wouldn't have to worry about all the mics and all that crap and all the cables because you have it already set up for them. You might actually like it. I don't know. Seems like it would be pretty convenient. What kind of acoustic drum? This is a Ludwig Epic Series. I believe it's the funk setup with a 10, a 12, a 16, and 14 snare. It's in a mahogany burst color. I love the look of this kit. I actually bought this off of eBay years ago. It was like the display model of a music store somewhere in another state, and I got a really, really good deal on it. I can't remember how much I paid for it. I think it was like 600 bucks, but I love this drum set. Before I made it a hybrid and I had normal coated ambassador heads on here, it sounded so freaking good. I love this drum set. There was so much attack in the toms, even though they're pretty pretty shallow. I could talk about this drum set all day. I really don't mean to ramble, but it sounded really good. The snare has a lot of crack to it. Will these rolling triggers work with other modules? Yes, they should. If your module harness, that's the cables that come out of your module that connect all your triggers, if they are a quarter inch cable, that's what the triggers need. They should work. I haven't tested this with anything else other than a Roland, but I'm pretty sure they should work. Do you get much bounce off the kick drum? No, not really. As some of you know, I have this kick drum filled with a heavy comforter blanket and a bunch of pillows. It's completely filled, which makes it really dead. I can see how that would make it seem pretty bouncy. And paired with a thin mesh head, that's definitely not as thick as a normal head. It may seem a little bouncy, but it's really not. Like, it feels really solid. The heads on the tom and snare are a lot bouncier than a clear coated head, a standard head. Um, it's a lot like a standard Roland mesh electric drum set. You know, they have that bounce to it. This is a single ply, these heads. I think the heads on the regular Roland electric drum set, I think they're like a, a dual or triple ply head. They're a little thicker, but there definitely is a little bounce in the, in the snare and toms, but not so much in the kick. All right, so I'm gonna give you a complete rundown of how I transfer my playing on this drum set to my computer. All right, so I have my Roland TD9 module hooked up to this MIDI cable. This MIDI out is plugged into the MIDI out output, lots of outs, and then that's plugged into the USB port in my computer. And then on my computer, I have Superior Drummer 2. That's where I get all my sounds from. Superior Drummer 2 detects the MIDI signal that is sent through this from my drums into the program and subsequently plays the corresponding snare trigger with the snare sound and so on with the cymbals and the toms. So that's how I get my playing onto my computer. And that's also how I record. If I'm recording through GarageBand, I can have Superior Drummer linked to GarageBand and then whatever I record on my drum set through Superior Drummer will record in the project in GarageBand. That's how it works for me. One question I got asked a lot was how much did all of this cost? And the reason I didn't address that in the first video is because if you were to build a setup like this, it most likely will be a lot different than mine. You'll have different toms, uh, you might have a different brain or module, different cables, all these little factors. It might be different, so I didn't want to have a huge difference in price. Whether theirs would be a lot more or mine would be a lot more, I, I wanted to just kind of avoid that. But since so many of you asked about it, I'm going to break down how much all this costs. Okay, so first I'm going to start with the parts that I didn't have. The parts that I purchased when I decided I was going to do this build. The Roland RT30 triggers I bought as a bundle, a five pack, three tom, one snare, and one kick. That was a total of $400. The Pintec RS5 triggers I bought as a bundle as well. I got them on sale as a five pack for 
The L80 symbol I bought as a three pack set. A ride, a crash, and a hi-hat. I got those used online for $100. And then finally, the mesh heads. I needed five of them. A 14 inch snare, 10 inch tom, 12 inch tom, 16 inch tom, and a 22 inch kick drum. Those five heads together equaled $99. 400 rolling triggers, 40 pin tech triggers, $100 L80 symbols, 99 silent stroke heads. That equals $639. And that was all the gear I didn't have. The stuff I needed to add to my existing gear in order to make this build. Now, these are the parts that I already had. The Ludwig five piece acoustic set was let's say $700 because I can't remember how much it was. The Roland TD9 module which I bought with the complete TD9, KS, whatever set. I bought that as a whole, but I looked online and this TD9 module brand new is $900. Now also priced separately was the TD9 harness. Now this harness is what connects all the triggers into the module. And again, that's a piece I already had just like the module, but that priced individually online I looked up was $57.50. So that comes to a total of $1,657.50. So that combined with the $639 of additional parts I needed, that equals $2,296.50. Now that may seem like a high amount, but there are ways to make this build cheaper. For instance, let's talk about the drum set. To do this build, you don't need a $700 drum set. You don't need a $500 drum set. You could have a $99 drum set. You could have a little Hello Kitty drum set. What the f I wouldn't recommend it, but you could if you really wanted to. You could trigger that and make it sound so freaking good and metal, and that would be cool if someone did that. Please, someone do that. The reason I use this $700 drum set is because it's the only acoustic one that I had. If you look on Craigslist or eBay, you can get a good used drum set for like a third of that, and it would work just as fine. It would sound just as good as the samples that you're using. You don't need an expensive drum set. So you have options like that. And I actually did some research on this. I went on Craigslist and eBay for like five minutes and I looked at all the parts that I would need to do a build very similar to this. And I was able to knock off a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars. Premium price. I've got $19.99 for sale for $20. You can buy $35.50 for $40. Oh, laying it. In five minutes, I found a module which came with a harness for like 300 bucks and it was a good rolling. I found a really nice used drum set, a like quality one for like 150 bucks. Someone's just like practically giving away. The triggers might be the most expensive part. If you want super accuracy, don't skimp on the triggers. In the trigger world, you kind of get what you pay for. If you're gonna buy nice triggers, you're gonna get nice accuracy and all that stuff. But the drum set really doesn't matter, oddly enough. I know it sounds weird. Okay, so to do this build, you have options, people. You can. You can do some research and find the stuff for cheap. It's done, I finally did it. I've been wanting to put out this video for a long time and I'm so glad I took the time to finally do it. Thank you guys so much. Also, good job to all of you that noticed I was playing a Final Fantasy VII song in my first video. Good ears, and also good ears for the one person who noticed there was an Undertale song in there. Very good. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I love hearing any comments that you have or any questions. Please feel free to go crazy on the comment section of this video. And thank you so much for watching.